Budget gaming PC builds are back in 2022. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Now you asked for it, so you got it. We're gonna go over what's changed in the GPU and the CPU markets to make this happen. And of course, go over the basics of putting together a price to performance monster of a budget gaming PC build 2022. And I'll give you specific gaming PC build templates to get you started. Buckle your seatbelts and check your cynicism at the door because we are about to take a joyride through a wonderful world we haven't seen in over a year. If you get value of the video, remember, give it a like. It makes a big difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. So why are budget gaming PC builds back, you ask? Because there has been an unexpected crash in cryptocurrency that has dropped GPU mining profitability significantly. And while crypto has recovered some of its value, the market forces remain the same. Coupled with the end of Ethereum mining that's looming around June 2022, many miners have stopped buying new GPUs. Many miners are also now selling off less productive GPUs like the RX 570, 580, GTX 970, GTX 1070. At the same time, AMD is pushing out a lot of mid-range RX 6600 and 6600 XT GPUs. And all this is combining for the first somewhat favorable GPU market for budget gaming PC builds since November of 2020. But the good news doesn't end there. Intel's new 12th gen CPUs, specifically the i5-12400, 12400F, and incredibly powerful i3-12100 and 12100F have arrived with decent stock coolers and somewhat affordable motherboards to significantly reduce the cost of building a gaming PC right now. Meanwhile, those interested in Ryzen gaming PC builds should note that the prices of the Ryzen 5600G and 5600X have fallen in recent weeks. Meanwhile, PSUs, RAM, SSD storage, and other components remain near all-time lows. With the exception of PC cases, I put together three build templates for you. One just over $1,000, one just under $700, and one at about $500. Now, all these PCs use either Ryzen 5000 or Intel 12th generation platforms, so I feel really good about their longevity and upgradability given the relatively low price points. As always, links for all the items in the builds will be down in the video description, so you can check out current pricing. Let's start out at the bottom. If you only have about $500 to spend, what can you build? Well, the best option remains the Ryzen 5600G APU system with a large enough power supply to accommodate a future graphics card. Now, I recently did a whole video going through the best Ryzen 5600G uh, gaming PC build, including benchmarks, overclocking, motherboards, memory, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that in depth, I'll leave a link up there in the card to it. The advantage of the Ryzen 5600G, you can actually play some games now at 1080p, 720p, playable frame rates, low settings, while you wait out the GPU market for or something like an RTX 3070. And you do get a powerful enough platform that when you actually get a GPU, it performs pretty well. The downside of the Ryzen 5600G is that, you know, it lacks Gen 4 support, PCI Gen 4. That's not something that I really consider a deterrent at this price level, but it's just something to be aware of. And of course, the lack of PCIe Gen 4 also works in our favor. It allows us to do something like this. Grab a relatively inexpensive A520 or B450 motherboard, as long as it has BIOS flashback. Remember, the Ryzen 5600G is a newer CPU, and a lot of the boards still don't come with a BIOS that will run with it. So you want to get one with BIOS flashback on it. That way you can flash the BIOS and the system will post. Very easy to do. I have a whole video on it. I'll leave a link up there in the card. On this one, I just went with the Gigabyte A520 DS3H. It has BIOS flashback on it. I believe the button is kind of in a weird place, though. It's down here near the SATA ports. Where the button is doesn't really make any difference. And this board will get you started. If you want to spend like something more premium, I think in our Ryzen 5600G build, we use the ASUS Tough Gaming B450 Plus to II, upgraded audio. Don't need that if you're just looking to get into gaming and get something going. We went with a really cheap 3200 CL16 2x8 gigabyte kit. Why 3200 CL16? It is the best price for mainstream gaming right now. This is gonna be true throughout most of the builds here. You get 99%-ish of the actual gaming performance, especially at a graphics card level like this. Yes, you could get a couple more frames if you go up to 3600 CL16, but that memory is more expensive. Now, if memory prices change and that comes down and it's about equal, yeah, of course, grab faster memory. But as I'm filming it right now, there is a significant enough price difference that I'm gonna recommend 3200 CL16. Then we just wanna grab any NVMe 500 gigabyte drive. I simply sorted by uh, lowest price. 
the team MP33, this is an absolute fine drive for the build, $45. Again, storage has never been this cheap. At least SSD storage has never been this cheap and definitely NVMe storage has never been this cheap. We are at historic lows for that. For the case, cases are tough right now, just given the market, uh, they're big empty boxes that have to typically be shipped across the ocean and shipping costs are astronomical right now. So the, the price of cases has gone up quite significantly in the last two months. Um, I would just say, go with something like a Fantex Eclipse P400. There's a thermal take case that we've used in the past. It's a micro ATX case. It comes with a fan. Just make sure you get two fans and the case has decent enough airflow. For the PSU, we just went with a C tier rated unit from the PSU Coltis list. Remember, check out my how to buy a power supply guide. Uh, that'll go through everything you need in terms of determining build quality for the unit. And we went with 650 watts. Why? Because if we get like a 3070 or something like, like that in the future, this would be enough power for that kind of graphics card. If you're just building this to play games, yeah, you could use a smaller power supply. But right now, you know, when you, especially when you see them on sale for like $38, you're not going to save much more price by going down in wattage. So feel free to pick up a higher wattage unit as long as it's a good rated unit. And the nice thing about this one is it is, uh, you know, it's semi-modular, which is great for cable management. But overall for $493 at the time of filming, you can get a great gaming PC for, especially for easy to play games like Fortnite, Roblox, League of Legends, those kinds of games, Valorant would run right on this system. If you're looking to run harder to play games like Cyberpunk 2077, no, this system is not for you and we'll jump into something else. But what if you wanna build a gaming PC that actually has a GPU in it and is capable of playing at good frame rates at 1080p, possibly even 1440p on the cheap? Well, I went ahead and I decided to scour the used market, which is massively improved as miners are selling off their lower end GPUs. They're simply not as profitable anymore. So what I did, I used a tech power up database with the Radeon RX 570 as my baseline. That's the lowest end card I'd wanna do a build with right now and still think about playing games in a couple of years with it. And I simply took all the data as a compare each card to the 570, dumped all that data into a massive list here, got rid of all the cards that Nvidia and AMD no longer support, and I spot checked the eBay prices, and if the cards are offered new, I also dumped in their new price as well. Then sorted the cards, and kaboom, this is our top 10 list of GPUs. Now here's the thing, this is the North American market. I know if you're in the UK, if you're in India, if you're somewhere else, this isn't gonna mean a whole lot to you. So I'm actually gonna include a link down to this spreadsheet in the video description. And what you can do is you can go through and do the same thing that I just did. Spot check the prices on eBay, spot check the prices on your local retailer, dump them in, and then use the sort feature up here and sort by price or performance, and you'll get a very, very good list of GPUs that you can buy right now. So right now in the US market, uh, especially starting at the lower end, the GTX 970, for RX 470, and RX 570 are great. 1080p kind of medium-ish cards, all around $200. The RX 6600 kills it. They're number four on the list. Now, yes, more expensive card, $460, but the performance is massively inflated versus the other uh, graphics cards, so it makes a lot of sense. I'll talk about the 6500 XT in a second, but the other graphics cards I would look at if you want a little bit more punching power uh, at that kind of $275, $280 level, GTX 980, RX 580, and the RX 480. The GTX 1070, if you're looking to play high frame rate games, still a very, very good card, $375. Some of the other ones that I expected to do better, like the 1066 gigabyte, the 1650 Super, maybe the 980 Ti, didn't do quite as well, but they're kind of in that mix. You can definitely take a look at them. And then of course the 6600 XT, if you're looking for the highest performance and still great value, that one was number nine on our list. But Jason, what about the RX 6500 XT? You can buy it brand new at Newegg, $270. Isn't buying new better than used? You get warranty, you get this, you get that. I don't think so. I still think that I would recommend those used cards. I'm gonna show you Gen 4 systems here. Uh, so we are going to cover over some of the weaknesses of this card because we are gonna use systems that are 12th Gen Intel and Ryzen 5000, all of which we're good with PCIe Gen 4. But I still don't like the by four limitation on the bandwidth and I hate the lack of encoding support for it. So if you don't mind losing all those features and if you fully understand the drawbacks of this card, then by all means, go ahead and purchase it if you don't wanna buy something used. 
I feel very comfortable buying something used and recommending something used, but the choice is ultimately up to you. First up is the $690 gaming PC. And if you can stretch it from the $500 Ryzen APU system, I strongly recommend you consider it. We're gonna go with Intel's i3 12100F for just $120 right now in stock at Walmart, hopefully in stock at other retailers. It's been going in and out of stock a little bit. Uh, so you may need to shop around for it. Again, I'll have links to everything in the video's description. Listen, in testing in all the various reviews, they found it traded blows with the i5 11400 and all but the heaviest multi-core workloads and outperformed it at times in terms of gaming, despite having only four cores and eight threads. And I know people can get really hung up on the core count, but remember, it isn't just how many cores you have, it's how powerful the cores are as well. Otherwise, frankly, we've all been using like 10 year old Xeon Intel processors that had like 12 cores, 24 threads, but we're not. And we're not using them for a reason because they're relatively weak CPUs despite the core count. When it comes to the i3-12100, it definitely punches way above its weight. It comes with an included box cooler, perfectly suitable for it, uh, no upgrade needed there. For the graphics card here, we are gonna go with the RX 580, and I have put in $275, which is about what they're going for now. You know, if you wanna go with a 570 or maybe the GTX uh, 970 instead, you certainly can for a cheaper price, but I feel like that 580 level of performance is really what you're looking for here. Let's talk about the motherboards though. Okay, following their very overpriced Z690 motherboards, Intel of course and their partners rolled out very overpriced, in my opinion, B660 and H670 motherboards. So we are gonna go with a an H610 board and hear me out on this because we are gonna save quite a bit of money going with this board. If you do wanna go with a B660, I do really like the Gigabyte DS3H board. It comes with Wi-Fi equipped and another number of other features that the ASUS Prime board that I was recommending doesn't come with for $140. But hear me out on the H610. It gives you PCIe Gen 4 at the main GPU slot, so you're good there. But all the M.2s are gonna be Gen 3. Now listen, we haven't even taken advantage of full SATA SSD speeds right now in gaming. So at the budget gaming level, I don't think you're losing anything by not adding a Gen 4 SSD maybe five years down the line, I think Gen 3 speeds are gonna be just fine for you. You can use XMP profiles on H610. The memory speed is gonna be limited to 3200 no matter what, but thankfully that is the mainstream price point for memory right now, 3200 CL16. That's what I'm gonna to recommend to you because again, this is a budget gaming build. We wanna make a massive investment in the graphics card, and then we wanna build the rest of the system around it. It's not gonna bottleneck that graphics card and potentially give us the opportunity down the in the future to upgrade to a faster graphics card. That's gonna give you everything that you need here. If you do wanna go with the B660, go ahead and go with the Gigabyte board instead. For the memory, I went with the simply the cheapest kit of DDR4 3200CL16 memory. Uh, right now that's a, a silicon power kit over at Amazon for $55, but you can find a number of these kits between $55 and $60 depending on your aesthetic choice if you wanna spend a couple dollars more. Similarly with the SSD, I went with one of the cheapest NVMe SSDs I could out there, $45 for 500 gigabytes. Again, this is the cheapest that NVMe SSDs have ever been right now, and it's amazing because you can save so much money versus what these drives would cost even just six months ago. For the case, I went with the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L. It's a micro ATX case, nice looking case. I know a lot of people like these, uh, like doing builds in them, and right now, Cases are expensive, uh, generally. So for, for $50, we get a case with an actual fan in it, and we're gonna add one more fan, just cheapest PWM, 120 millimeter fan I could get for $6. I would recommend you do exactly the same. Finally, for the power supply, this EVGA BQ unit right now is just on Supercell, $48. There's a number of cheaper units that I would look at. I'll leave a list down in the video description, of course. Uh, if something like this is available to you, you don't need 650 watts for this build. You probably only need about 500 watts for this build. But when you get this cheap on the power supplies, you just go with the best deal, and sometimes that's a, a bigger unit. Overall, for $687, you're getting a PC that can play real games at relatively good frame rates and you'd have a lot of fun with right now. Of course, if you do wanna upgrade this build, for about $800, you can add an i5-12400. For some reason, it's cheaper than the 12400F 
right now, as well as a B660 motherboard. I, again, I really do like the Gigabyte B660DS3H. This comes with uh, Wi-Fi 6 on it, $870, not that much more than we were looking at upgrading to a 12400 with an RX 580. We can throw in an RX 6600 in here instead. This is gonna smash most games at 1080p. You're gonna have an absolutely great time. And some games could even play at 1440p, especially easy to run titles. With the rest of the build being the same, $875, this is the way that I would go before upgrading the CPU. While we're here, let's take a quick look at what, what it would cost to upgrade both the CPU and the graphics card. We've got the i5-12400 in here, as well as the Gigabyte B660M DS3H. Again, pick your favorite B660 right now at the time of recording this. Selection is limited. And then we went with the ASRock Radeon RX 6600 for $460, similar to the last build. Overall, $993, let's call it a thousand bucks with, with uh, everything in there. Great PC for a thousand dollars. You will not be able to buy a pre-built for this. And I don't really know if you wanted to wait, how much longer you'd have to wait to get something that would even come close to this right now. And of course, I know people are gonna ask, well, Jason, what if we do that with a Ryzen build? I really wanna build a Ryzen PC. Good news, the 5600X has been steadily declining over the last couple of weeks in terms of price. Right now, you can pick it up for just about $250, which I think that's gotta be its lowest price since it released. And of course, Ryzen has a massive advantage in terms of cheaper motherboards. So we had the Gigabyte B660M D3SH, uh, with same class of motherboard, basically, for $95 on Ryzen, which you know, that's really, really helpful. Though this one doesn't have Wi-Fi, you know, you can always get a Wi-Fi dongle for 15 or $20. But overall, keeping the rest of the build the same with the Radeon RX 6600, uh, we still end up at about $1,000. So it's about, you know, 10, 20 bucks either way. So honestly, right now, especially while pricing is very unsettled with both Ryzen and the i5-12400, you know, consider either one. But if you want to go something cheaper, I would definitely focus on the i3-12100 and keep cranking that graphics card up, maybe until you get to an RX 6600 XT and then think about going up in the CPU. Let's quickly talk about, should you build now or should you wait? Well, I've shown you the builds, I've shown you the performance level, I've shown you the cost. I think you understand all of what you're getting right now. And you can do that for, in some cases, about 500 to $700. That's a pretty good, bandwidth of pricing right there. What's coming down the track that might change your opinion? So I think if you wanna wait, you should really have in your mind, what are you waiting for? Not just kind of this vague, well, for things to improve. What are you waiting for? So let's take a look down the track. We've got possibly uh, the used GPU market might continue to improve as minor sell-off cards, maybe. Ethereum also might just go back up and they might just decide, screw it, I'm gonna hold on to these cards until you can't mine Ethereum whatsoever and maybe you're waiting for a proof of stake, and that's gonna be sometime June, July. And that could always get kicked back, right? I don't think it will this time, always a possibility. The other thing you might be waiting for right now is Intel to launch its GPU lineup. Now, think through that one. You may have early adopter issues with some of the Intel GPUs. You might have to fight through some of their drivers. Maybe they'll launch perfectly, and it'll be the most amazing thing ever. I'm just saying, first generation products don't often go that well. I do trust Intel to actually fix all those issues within the first month or two. They did that with Alder Lake. There were a lot of early adopter issues with Alder Lake, a lot of early adopter issues, but they fixed them all. And at this point, I feel very comfortable recommending to any level builder, go ahead and build an Alder Lake PC. I think the same is gonna be said of the Intel GPUs. This is my personal opinion. I don't have any inside information. This is my life experience doing this stuff. So take all that into consideration and Intel's launch I'd say probably we'll see a volume of cards May or June. So that's your time frame if you want to wait. I do think also what what's the difference going to be between now and then? Fifty dollars, maybe fifteen percent performance, six months of gaming, uh, you know, six months of your life not not spent wa uh, wanting a graphics card. That alone, the mental health benefit of that may be worth it. I I think it is. So just things to take into account. I really hope this video helped you think through about building your budget gaming PC that I know a lot of you have put off for so long. If you got value out of this video, please do give it a like. It makes a big difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. One way or the other, I know you'll make the right decision. You're all adults out there. And I'll catch you on the next one.